Hello, everyone. Good evening and welcome. Ahmed, Atlanta, uh, Bharat, Hussein, Ketan, uh, Omoregi, and Zainab. Welcome, everyone. And um, yeah, can you just type in the chat hi or yes, or just raise your hand so that I know you're there and you can all hear me? Can you all hear me okay? Atlanta said hello. Ahmad raised his hand, Zainab raised her hand. Perfect. Um, what about Parat? Ketan said yes, Hossein said hi. Yeah, Omar Raghi. Bharat said hi, perfect, good. Good evening, everybody. Hello, everyone, once again, good evening. Yeah, good to have you all. Okay, great, fantastic. So, so let me just introduce myself. As you can see, me and my name right there on the screen, you know, uh, not on the right side. On the left side of the screen, that's me. Uh, my name is Idris, and uh, I'm one of the trainers, instructors, SAT, IELTS, test prep instructors at UniHawk. Um, okay, and tonight, guys, uh, we're going to talk about the new SAT, okay? Or well, we're going to compare the format of the new digital SAT and also the old one. Of course, you, you uh, I'm sure you must be familiar with the format of the old. If not, we're going to go through that as well. And also we'll talk about um, do the topics and contents change for the new format, meaning are you going to need new knowledge, new information, new topics, or are you going to prepare the same skills or, or new skills in order to beat the, the test? And the second, the last thing is how can we plan uh, for the SAT efficiency? We're going to talk about all of them one by one. In the meantime, let me welcome uh, Doku. Um, hello, Doku and uh, Nantini. And Shamit, okay, Shamita, welcome you all. So uh, if you can hear me, Doku and Nandini, if you can hear me, say hi in the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the meantime, we'll just get started, okay? So so let's get started, guys. Okay, that's uh, Nandini. Hi, Nandini, good evening. Okay. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions, you can put them in the Q&A or in the chat, you know, um, and we can talk about it. So guys, um, so first things first, uh, is it better to type or write? Come on, answer this in the chat quickly. You have 10 to 20 seconds to answer this. Is it better to type or, okay, to sign type, Atlanta write, Kitan type, sign up type, type Nandini. Yeah. Come on, everybody else. Type right. I'm a Reggie, Bharat. Yeah, type. Okay, right. Okay. Yeah, Doku. Pra Pragya. Okay. So type right, type right, type right. Okay. The thing is that on, on the digital SAT or the paper SAT, there isn't any writing or typing, you know? So a lot of people think, when you think of the digital test, a computer test, everybody starts panicking and say, hey, what about keyboard, what about pencil? It's just, you know, clicking the answers and that's all, you know? So you don't have to worry about the type and the right thing. You know, I've been asked this multiple times, uh, but it's just clicking. So there's no special skills required, okay? Um, so let's do a little comparison of the current paper test and the new digital SAT. Okay, so first of all, here's the summary sheet. You can take a screenshot of this. You know, this is all you need to know about both the tests. The um, paper test, as you can see, right? It's three hours long. It's right here on the left side. You can see three hours long. And in those three hours, you were supposed to do 154 questions, which have become two hours now and 14 minutes. And instead of 154 questions, you're going to do only 98 questions. So that is 56 questions less than you know the, the paper test. And also almost roughly one hour less than that. And previously, you would spend uh, 65 minutes on reading, and then a break, and then writing and grammar part, and then math with no calculator, and then break, and then math with calculator. But now it's straightforward. You have the reading and writing combined, as opposed to you know the paper test where reading and writing are two separate tests, you have the reading and writing combined together. So you have a module one 
uh, where you talk about reading and writing. There are 27 questions on it. And there's another module. Uh, and there's a little typo. It's not module one again. It's actually module two. You know, so sorry about that. It's module two reading writing. So there are two modules, right? Um, and they both have a mix of questions. Reading and writing, they're combined. Together, you will have 64 minutes for both of them. And then there's a break of 10 minutes, and then you have the math. And it's, there's no question of calculator, no calculator. Calculator is allowed throughout the math section. Module one, 22 questions of math, 35 minutes. Module two, 22 questions again on math, 35 minutes. 70 minutes together, 10 minutes in the middle. So roughly two hours. Straightforward um, as compared to the previous version. It's just one break in the middle, and that's it. OK. So, so this is the, the overall structure. Now, uh, a few details about the test, right? Um, number one, the availability of it. You know, internationally, <clears throat> this month, it's rolled out. You know, and in the U.S., it's going to be in 2024, you know? So, uh, so, sorry, not this month, March, right? So anybody who's taking the test in March, it's January, so February, March. So it's the digital SAT, no more paper, right? Uh, the length of the test, we talked about it, three hours, 15 minutes. And this is two hours, 14 minutes. Um, digital SAT timing is 64 for the reading and writing. For the paper test was 100 minutes. And there you had the format was reading five passages, 52 questions. Writing and language, four passages, 44 questions. It's different on the digital SAT. I've already explained it, but reading and writing are combined into one section, 27 questions. So half of them are reading and the other half is writing. And there are 54 multiple choice questions, both the modules together. Uh, and each one is a very short passage. And I'll show you the passages right away. Yeah. This is the paper test. Take a look at this. This used to be the reading. It's a sample reading test on the yeah, paper SAT. Take a look. This is one reading, by the way. Yeah, you would have five readings like this. Yeah. Okay, it's 85 to 86 lines. It's the entire screen. You would have a reading like this, and then you would have questions like these. Which choice best describes what happens in the passage? The whole passage. You were previously supposed to read the entire you know, passage, uh, 89, uh, 120, 80, 85 lines, and understand what's happening. This reading, the paper test, is now this. That has become this. That's all. On the digital SAT, this is how long the reading passage is. This is like 10% of this, right? And then you have a question on it. What is the main purpose of the text? Now compare these two. What is the main purpose of this? What's the main purpose of this? How long do you think you need? You can, you can type your answer in the chat, everybody. How long do you think you need to read this entire passage, 86 lines, and then understand what the main topic is? What happens in the entire passage? How long do you need? Can you just give me a rough guess, an estimate? How long? Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. 15, 30 minutes, eight minutes, 90 minutes, nine minutes. Okay, good, anybody else? Hussain, Zainab, yeah, Sandini, Ketan, Atlanta, Barath, yeah, go ahead. 15 minutes, 15 minutes, yeah, uh -huh. four minutes. Mm, that's ambitious. Pro okay. Okay, good, good. So, yeah, four minutes, that would be super if you, if you could pull that off, right? Great, okay, that could help. I could definitely help Atlanta. You're a literature student, so that, that comes in handy. Yeah. So, guys, you know, I mean, on average, it's going to take like five to seven minutes, right? Even more, like to read it and understand it and be able to answer this. And then choose one of these four, you know? It's like, oh, well, that'd be just what happens in the whole passage. Hey, wait a minute, C. A, C, A, C. Oh, my God. Go back, go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, right? A little confusing. That reading of 89 lines has become this now. 
How long do you think you need to read this entire thing, understand it, and answer the question? <laughs> exactly, like one to two minutes, eh? You know? And yeah, maximum two minutes, perfect. So this one previously, guys, one reading on the digital SAT, it used to have like 10 to 11 questions, you know? Uh, 13 questions, 10, 11, 12, 13 questions, you know, between 10 to 13 questions. But this one now, one reading, one question, that's it. One reading, one question. That's all, right? So, so this is it. Now, this is the writing part, you know? This is the writing part, take a look. Previously, the writing or the language or the grammar questions were like this on the paper test. Um, you'd present it with a, the passage, and then there would be questions on the right side and you would answer them one by one. And those questions were embedded there. You know, they were taken from, they were extracted from the, from the passage. So you were supposed to understand the whole passage. Again, 70 to 80 lines, maybe a hundred lines, right? And then in every paragraph, you'll have two or three grammar questions, vocabulary, punctuation, uh, verb tenses, parallelism, etc. right? This, the writing test has become this now. Take a look. One small passage, one question, that's it. That's all. So go ahead, go ahead. Why don't you all try this one? Give it a try. This is the digital SAT sample writing question. Get to the chat guys and please answer the question and send a message to me, a direct message to me. Go and share with everybody in the chat. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, Hussein answered it. Yeah. Could you please just send a message, a direct message to me? Okay, Zainab answered it too. All right, all right, okay. Yes, Ketan answered it as well. Atlanta answered it too. Come on, I have uh, 14 people in class. Pragya and uh, Umaregi, Hussain, Farema, Doku, Barat, Ahmad, Kader. Come on, everybody, try it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So everybody, you're split between B, C, somebody said D, right? Okay, okay. All right, guys, so let me just answer this for you, okay? Now, the correct answer is A. Okay, why is it A? Well, take a look. You see these double quotations? We need double quotations. And the point is, all of them have got them. So that doesn't solve my problem. Okay, but then the next thing is the punctuation, comma, colon, semicolon, full stop. So, should the comma or semicolon or colon or a period, should it be inside the quotation marks or outside? If you have double quotes, where does the second punctuation go, outside or inside, right? Now the, on the SAT, remember, if you have the second punctuation with the double quotations, it goes inside, right? Not outside, just remember that. Although it can take either positions, but on the SAT, it's, it's the inside. Thing. So A and D, they have the punctuation inside the double quotes, not outside. So that eliminates these two, right? Okay, then should I put a full stop or a comma? Comma means the same sentence continues, full stop means a new one starts. And if you start with D, uh, absence of the soul, and then you start with positing that life all, and that is an awkward start, right? Uh, you cannot say positing, you should say he posited, right? For the complete sentence. Since we don't have a he positive, positing is like a comma, meaning my friend came in, comma, talking on the phone, right? It's like that. So you put a comma, positing something, and that's it. So punctuation goes inside, positing with a comma, continue the same sentence as opposed to starting a new one. A new one would require a subject and verb. So the answer should be A. We all good? Do you understand the logic here? Yeah? Praia, Bharat, Atlanta? 
All good? You see? So that's it. This is it. Previously, on the paper test, we would have a passage like this, and then you were supposed to fix this here, and then the same passage continues. So you were not only expected to address the writing and the language problems, but also understand what is happening in the passage. So it was like a double trouble. You know, to a lot of the extent, it was like understanding the passage and the sentences before and the sentences after, and then what's happening? Should I put a comma? Is it a, should I combine them, not combine them, transition them, etc. right? That's gone, it's straightforward. Here's the passage, here's the question, done, next, right? And, and that's the end of it. The math, ladies and gentlemen, uh, previously it was 80 minutes. Uh, by the way, math for most of the, uh, it kind of like almost remains the same, but then it's just that the format changes. It was 80 minutes and no calculator, calculator. It's just calculator for all sections, you know, and you have 70 minutes and, and that's it. That's the end of it. Like here, this, it, yeah, this is the key takeaway here, right? So anyways, so the, yeah, some other details. What about this one? Knowledge and skills. Yeah. Are they going to change? Are we required to learn new things, new skills? The answer is no. You know, and that's a relief, man. That's a big relief. So you would be required same skills and the same knowledge, uh, but you'd be tested on, um, you know, an easier field. You know, let me put it that way. Uh, reading and writing are combined. Previously, they were separate. And there are two modules, by the way, reading and writing module one, reading and writing module two, and the modular. So the modular, uh, you know, structure is introduced, which was not there before. And also it's adaptive. Adaptive means your performance on entire module one. Now, nothing changes in module one as you're doing it. But at the end of the module one, you know, before the second one starts, it will be adapted for your performance on the previous one. Meaning if your performance, by the way, here you will have easy medium, hard, and even very hard questions in the first module. Based on your performance there, the second module could either be all a combination of easy mediums or mediums hard or hard and very hard, right? And then depending on that level, your score will go up and down. So if your performance here is really good, you know, it's like, you know, like 100% performance, let's say, you know, uh, that means and if you have answered all the hards and very hards here in the next module, you're going to have the hard and very hard, meaning your score is very likely to be above 700 plus, you know, so it's very adaptive. So the second module is adapted based on your performance in the first module for both reading and math and uh, writing and math. Right. That's it. If you want to get in touch, this is it. Please take a screenshot of this. And also, if you have any questions, put your questions in the chat or in the Q&A, or you can, if you wanna, if you wanna, yeah, I have a question here. So how is the city helpful for us in terms of educate? Okay, Zainab, you would need SAT to, you know, uh, for your admissions, okay? You'd need SAT for your admission and certain colleges, you know, they, most colleges in the US especially, they want an SAT. It's like the entrance test, you know, in addition to your academic performance, SAT shows how smart you are and how capable you are. So they want to know that score, without which it's not possible to, to, to get admission. Okay, well, PSAT is not for you guys. It's for like lower grades. Yeah. Um, have to take an SAT in March. This one is in March. This one is in March. So um, so if you work with an admission counselor here at UniHawk, you have admission counselors and you're working with them. Uh, they know the entire process. They'll get you, know, get you registered and everything else will be done for you. Uh, SAT and IELTS, by the way, um, well, depending on different universities, you know, uh, sorry, uh, colleges, you know, some uh, in addition to SAT would also ask for an IELTS score and some won't. Like, so where are you going? Which college are you going? And what are their requirements? Depends on from, you know, depends on college to college. So, so, uh, so no, that's, that's, uh, yeah. So IELTS is that, but usually in the last, let's say, 
uh, uh, one year, you know, I had, you know, both both kinds of students, students that only needed, uh, uh, you know, SAT scores. And there were those who needed both SAT and, you know, uh, IELTS. So that's it. Um, so in IELTS, like which, um, is there a specific date for this SAT? Because I don't want to have right my school is in. Okay, yeah, there is a date, I think, Nandini. The date is 10th of March, right? I think. Um, but then our admission counselors, they would know the exact date and the timing, the procedure for you to get enrolled and get registered, you know. So feel free to get in touch. You know, here are our social handles and our website and our phone number. That's a WhatsApp, you know. Get in touch. Ask them questions. You know, they'll be more than happy to help you with the dates and procedures and registrations, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, that Atlanta, I think roughly you you know, uh, I mean, everything you've learned in your high school, you know, that's the equivalence of the SAT and the IGC roughly, right? Uh, because the, the, the type of content that I teach, you know, I, mean, uh, I used to teach uh, for the SAT paper test and now for the digital one, it's the grammar, the high school grammar, right? And the high school reading comprehension. So uh, that's roughly the equivalence. Um, which is we should do, do that. Well, it's not about the age group. It's uh, if you are in, in 11th grade, 12th grade, you're ready for SAT. Uh, yes, Nandini, some people have their annual exams and um, yeah, but then you have to plan it. You have to plan it accordingly. And that's why we have these admission counselors. I'm a trainer. We have a counselor's team. We have admissions team. And there are people who know how to handle all these things and help you with the process. So keep that in mind, you know. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'll, I'll stop it here. Stop it here, man. It was it was a lovely evening with you guys, and it was it was great to have you all. So for more information, just in case you haven't taken a screenshot, let me share this again. Here we go. Just in case you need it. Yeah. Now. Okay. So, yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. We'll be more than happy to answer any and all questions. Okay, it was lovely to have you all and good luck on your, you know, admissions and everything. Uh, Kai says, wait a minute, there's a question. Kai says that, uh, how much prep do you need to the 1500 plus score? Well, Kai, um, you know, if you want to score 1500 plus, it's not about how much prep you need right now. It's about how much, let me put it this way. Like, how good are you at math and English already before coming for SAT preparation? So we'll give you a diagnostic test. When you come to us, we're going to give you a diagnostic test. You take that, we will know where you are. And then based on how good you are, we can tell you how long you need to prepare in order to score a 1500 plus, right? So it's like, not all of you. I mean, there's not a single answer for all of you. Like, if you want to score a 1500 plus, uh, here's one month, here's three months, here's five months. No, 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 it's not like that. Come, take the test. We know where you are. How much help do you need? Some people need three to four months. Others need six months. Some need one month, depending on a person's level, you know? So, so Case, um, I, I hope that answers your question. Yes, yes, Ketan, yes, Ketan. Um, you can definitely do that. On Khan Academy, you have a lot of material. Uh, actually, as of now, we don't have a lot of material for the digital SAT. It's only Khan Academy and the College Board test. And College Board has issued four tests. Um, they're also available there. And uh, Khan Academy has some extra material. And the Blue Book, you can anytime get on the website, you know, the College Board website and check Blue Book and practice there. Yeah. Okay, great. That's it, guys. Shiza and uh, Kais, you joined a bit late. But anyways, good to have you all. Farema and Adorn. So, Ahmad, Atlanta, Duku, Hussain, Andini, Omaregi, and uh, Zainab, everybody. Thank you very much. It was lovely to have you all. And uh, have a good one. Good night, everyone.